Hello, everyone. Welcome to our webinar today. Uh, it's right at two o'clock, so I would like to get started. We appreciate you um, joining us today. And uh, I am Dr. Crystal Gossert, Doctor of Clinical Nutrition and Certified Nutrition Specialist. I am an education specialist with Life Extension, and uh, I just appreciate all of you being here, joining us, um, learning all about our latest and greatest innovations here at Life Extension, um, and we just appreciate all of you for joining. Okay, and let's just make sure everyone has the ability to. You can feel free to chat um, and I will check the chat every once in a while. Let's just make sure everyone has the ability to chat. You should be able to chat. If someone would like to just send a quick little chat to test it out, And if not, I'm not seeing any chat coming through, but you know, you can always send us an email. You can always reach out to one of our knowledgeable wellness specialists uh, at Life Extension. Um, the number is 1-800-226-2370, and they'll be happy to answer any questions. Or you can send me a message, uh, Dr. Crystal at lifeextension.com. Feel free to email me any follow-up questions again dr crystal at lifeextension.com so let's go ahead and jump into our topic today a closer look at our newest nutrients so what's new it's all about the immune system with beta glucans skin protection with an herbal blend rice ceramides and vitamin c as well as a new probiotic strain, Bifidobacterium lactis, HN019. So let's jump into immune support. And you can see the picture of mushrooms. We definitely will be talking about mushrooms today, but it's all about beta glucans. But first, let's zero in on our problem, which is the need for the immune system. Um, support. I'll have to tell you that unfortunately, I have been under the weather. And people are often, you know, you wonder, you know, you are the picture of health. Well, yes, I hope I am. However, that doesn't mean that I don't experience challenges. My children don't experience challenges. Um, we have been sheltered in for a very long time, working from home. My my daughter went to school uh, her her kindergarten year uh, from home, and we decided uh, once the school year ended, we put her in a musical camp, uh, music theater camp, and we're now exposed to the public uh, after having been home for well over a year. And as expected, which you know typically happens every year. Um, she brought home a bug. Uh, we got tested. It wasn't COVID, thank goodness. But um, then I got sick and then my son got sick. And, and so we do know that, um, that bugs are out there and we are getting out more and we're being exposed more. And we do know that um, the average adult has about two to three colds per year. Now, you know, you take lots of nutrients and, and for me, it's not that many, thank goodness, per year. And I'm sure for many of you, because you are certainly health focused if you're joining this webinar. Um, but common colds, that's the main reason why adults miss work. And we're looking for new strategies, old strategies, ways to boost our immune system. And we're gonna talk about a, a strategy outside of the typical vitamin C, the, the elderberry that's everywhere, the zinc that's everywhere, the vitamin D, those are foundational things. Um, but let's take a look at 
at something that's a little bit different. Whoop. Wait, let's go back. And those are beta glucans. They are carbohydrates, a type of fiber uh, that is found in, as you can see, mushrooms, baker's yeast, whole grains, seaweed. Um, and what's really nice about beta glucans is that they can prime the immune system and help your immune system to act faster. Um, and we'll get to those details on exactly how that happens a little bit later. But first, let's talk about beta glucans because we, we went through different sources. And again, it's a type of soluble fiber. Um, and But depending on the source, you know, many people think about beta glucans in cereal grains. However, they're more specific for heart health. The ones that we're going to focus on are the beta glucans that you find in mushrooms as well as baker's yeast. And what they're doing here, they are uh, binding to receptors on immune cells. So beta glucan is not something that's a part of the human body. So when they're introduced to the human body, um, it kind of, the, the, the immune system mounts a reaction and these beta glucans can help to activate and prime some of our frontline immune cells, such as those macrophages. So yes, how they work, I have a little animation here that I think will help to explain what I just talked about a little bit better. So again, they're not made by humans, so the immune cells will respond to them as potential intruders. So you have this immune cell, this is a monocyte. The next thing that happens, dietary beta-glucans, let's say you eat some mushrooms, um, you drink some beer, <laughs> that's where your, your baker's yeast uh, comes in or, or your yeast that's used to, to ferment foods comes in. And boom, that immune cell is now activated because those beta-glucans bind to those receptors on the immune cell. Now you have this active immune cell that's just floating around the bloodstream and it is ready to, to respond to any challenges that you may be facing. And so what we call that is that your immune system is now primed for, uh, for a attack. And so we do see that primed immunity um, activates those immune cells like the NK cells and even can support more of the specialized immune cells such as those T cells as well as those B cells. We know that the B cells are involved with producing antibodies. And, and so we just have an immune system that is more robust and, and ready to fight for you. Um, in addition, because beta-glucans are a type of soluble fiber, they actually have a prebiotic effect. So they help to nourish your healthy gut bacteria. And we know that the majority of our immune system is in the gut. So supporting a healthy microbiota is key to supporting a healthy, robust immune system. So there we are, our primed immune system. Now there are thousands of species of mushrooms and many have health benefits. Um, three have been particularly uh, effective at supporting immune health. And those are shiitake, which I like to eat, <laughs> uh, mataki, and shaga, which is one that most people may not be familiar with, is actually found on birch trees. But any of you, I mean, we, we know mushrooms, we love them and uh, to cook with them and to eat them. When I was back in the day, when I was a vegan, mushrooms were certainly a staple in my diet. It helped to give me that umami flavor, that kind of meaty texture. Um, and, and it's you know, very beneficial as a meat substitute in many dishes, but they are very beneficial. Um, and really, that if you're not eating mushrooms every day, 
then you're not getting those clinically validated doses of the polysaccharides, specifically those beta glucans that you find in mushrooms. So here's a, a really good study, uh, a human clinical study, and this was actually published in the journal of the American College of Nutrition, which I'm actually a member, and it's a randomized controlled trial found that daily mushroom intake, and this was the equivalent of about one to two servings of fresh mushroom, showed an increase in T cells, increase in NK T cells, which is kind of like a special type of T cell um, that is particularly beneficial for supporting the immune system, an increase in salivary IgA. And you know, when I when you look at the full text of this study, the researchers identify that this marker, the increase in the salivary IgA, is indicative that this is supporting gut immunity. IgA is a type of antibody that's found in you, your mucosal membranes. It's a part of that first line defense of the immune system. And, and so it's always nice to kind of see an increase in those first line defenders. We also, in the study, noted a 26.3% reduction in CRP. What that means is less inflammation in the body. And we also saw an increase in more of the anti-inflammatory um, uh, immune system um, messengers, those cytokines. And so an, an increase in IL-4, IL-10, uh, which is just another marker, two other markers that we can, can equate to reduced inflammation in the body. And this was after uh, four weeks. And these numbers are compared to the participants baseline um, markers in these areas. And so they consume this, this shiitake mushroom extract every day, uh, or these mushrooms every day for, uh, for four weeks and notice these beneficial benefits with, with the markers. Now, another good source of beta-glucans uh, is, ba is baker's yeast. And multiple randomized uh, controlled clinical trials shows a significant alleviation in upper respiratory tract infections and allergic episodes. And, and so this study, I love talking about this study because we actually can see, you know, not just the mechanism of action, but how does that translate to how a person actually feels? Um, so this is one study, 98 older adults given beta-glucans for 90 days during the winter months. And the results, 28 cases of upper respiratory tract infections in the placebo group versus 17 cases in the beta-glucan group. So we do see that there is a reduced uh, number of upper respiratory tract infections in those individuals who consume the beta-glucans. And when we look at day 45, the beta-glucan group has significant increases in blood markers of immune stimulation, which would beg to, uh, we would say, hey, that's why they had less upper respiratory tract infections. Now, the second study looks at runners, Mar not any runner, marathon runners. And what's, uh, why you sometimes see immune studies looking at um, endurance athletes is because after you participate in, a, in an endurance event, such as running a marathon or a triathlon, um, you do see a decline in the immune system. Um, and so in this study, the researchers assessed upper respiratory uh, upper respiratory tract infections, that's what URTI stands for. And so looking for the incidence of upper respiratory tract infections post-marathon. Uh, and just to clarify, exercise is good, but 
you know, the, the endurance activities can be very taxing on the body. Uh, so they were given beta glucans for 28 days after the marathon. And the results, beta glucan group had 37% significant reduction in cold and flu days post-marathon compared to the placebo group. So more uh, indications that beta-glucans are beneficial. Other clinical research, I just highlighted two clinical studies using uh, the, the beta-glucans specifically, and then one looking at the mushrooms. But we also see uh, fewer symptomatic days, um, less severe infection symptoms, fewer work days lost to illness, increased number of immune cells in the blood, and increased secretion of antibodies in the saliva. And this is with kind of a combination of uh, a, a summary slide of some of the other studies related to upper respiratory tract infections and immune support for beta-glucans. Now let's move on to skin protection. Uh, defense from environmental and aging factors. I'm gonna check to see if we have any chats coming in. I'm not seeing any chats and I do apologize about that. We'll, we will certainly have to check to see um, what's going on to see if we have, make sure we have this chat turned on. Uh, let's see, can, I'm just making sure we have um, everything checked so that you are able to participate in the chat. Let's see, I think there was a hand raised. All right. Okay, so let's move on to skin protection. What does it mean to have healthy skin? Good question, right? Well, we do know that the outer layer of the skin or the epidermis protects the body from the environment. And so that's kind of what you see here in this picture, my little image of the graphic of the sun, and this is pollution. <laughs> uh, we do see that this outer layer of the skin is really protecting the beneficial components, the hyaluronic acid, which is all about holding, locking in moisture in the skin, the elastic fibers, the collagen. This is all about flexibility and structural support of the skin. You know, when we start losing this collagen, that's when you start getting a wrinkle, uh, which we do not want. Uh, but we do see that, you know, we need protection in the epidermis is a part of that, um, protecting the skin from the environment. But our problem is, we go back a slide, external dangers. And when we say the environment, it could be pollution, it could be UV radiation. Um, obviously, I was just on vacation and you spend a lot of time in the sun when you're on vacation by the pool. Uh, and, and so you have to protect your skin, of course, smoking, but all of these things produce oxidative stress and inflammation in the skin. They accelerate the skin aging process. They degrade the skin's structural integrity. So again, that barrier system, we start losing that, that, that epidermal barrier which is going to lead to wrinkling and fine lines. And I have to tell you, you know, pollution is not just uh, outdoors. There's a lot of indoor pollution. If you cook a lot, um, if you are, are burning candles that are not, you know, healthy candles, there's a lot of, of, of environmental things that we're exposed to even inside of our homes and we need protection from all of those things. So, you know, just going back to that epidermal barrier, when that barrier becomes weakened, then you start seeing cosmetic changes in the skin. So it increases susceptibility to skin conditions, dermatitis, um, skin diseases, even cancer. 
when that epidermal barrier is weakened. And it also decreases the skin's moisture barrier. So you're going to have thinning, wrinkles, uh, dryness, roughness, it, and of course, uh, at worst, increased risk of infection. And so you can see here healthy skin. There's that picture of the healthy skin, the ceramides. Ceramides are thought of almost like the glue. If you think of the brick and mortar model of the skin, you can think of ceramides as kind of that mortar that's holding those skin cells together. And you start losing all of that when you're exposed to the environment, when you are exposed to the sun. So of course, we need protection. And hopefully I didn't skip too far. Uh, we need protection. And in this slide here, it's a little bit um, complex, but I'll try to simplify it a little bit. It looks like my computer is doing some skipping on its own. Um, let's just see if it goes back to, there we are. There's a little bit of a delay. Um, but one thing we wanted to show here, it's a very complex, I guess, slide from, from a graphic perspective, but we do want to just drive the point that um, this exposure is affecting skin at the cell level. We kind of kind of talked about the epidermis and all of those factors, the collagen, the elastin, the hyaluronic acid, the ceramides, but we do see that it's causing an overexpression of a protein, this ARH, which increases genes responsible for oxidative stress, inflammation, um, immunosuppression, pigmentation, as well as premature aging. So we do know that we need to target this from a cellular perspective. Now, of course, topical options are great, uh, but in order to target what's happening at the cellular level, it's important to address this from the inside out. And so there are, there are nutrients, herbs, such as rosemary, olive leaf, Japanese Sephora, as well as lapia uh, extract um, that can support the skin and more so protect the skin from the inside out. And that is what you will see in the upcoming slide. It's coming up, there we are. Uh, so this is a, a herbal extract, actually has been researched to be particularly beneficial with protecting the body and mitigating the negative effects of pollution and UV exposure. Let me just close a window that's gonna help us, my computer to run a little faster. <laughs> okay, and, and so how does this herbal combination works? So remember that overexpression of that compound that, that kind of targets genes related to inflammation. Well, we see in research in a cell culture study, human skin um, uh, explants were exposed to pollutants. And we see looking at the overactivation of that AHR when those herbal extracts were included, that herbal combination, you do see uh, an 87% decrease in the percent positive area of that overexpression of that of AHR. So here is a, a human study, randomized double blind placebo controlled study and uh, this is with 100 females, 250 milligrams of herbal combination or placebo was given for 12 weeks. And these improvements, I wanted to put them all in a circle just so that, because uh, they were just amazing. Those taking the herbal combination, 
in those taking the herbal combination, 98% of subjects showed improvement in skin hydration and skin radiance. 97% of subjects showed improvement in dark spots. 95% improvement in, um, in the, the hydration of the skin. 96% showed a reduction in wrinkle depth, improvement in firmness, improvements in elasticity, also improvements in smoothness of the skin. So that's research with an herbal combination. Um, rice ceramides is another nutrient that can be supportive for hydrating the skin, protecting the skin. Um, you know, we, we do see improved skin hydration and moisturization um, is decreased with, um, I'm sorry, you can decrease water loss with ceramides. And that's what that transepidermal water loss, we saw improvements of that with the herbal blend, but you also see improvements with that with ceramides. And that was with, in this particular study, in individuals with atopic dermatitis, which is you know a type of eczema. Um, it's their safe, uh, safe way. We know that ceramides can sometimes come from wheat. This is coming from rice. So, uh, and we do have some research with the rice derived uh, ceramides. There's a rice derived ceramide study that we will show you. And this, so this is a study with orally derived ceramides, whole body skin barrier function. 123 healthy human volunteers with dry skin. They were given 30 milligrams of rice-derived ceramides or placebo for 12 weeks. And so they measured water loss of the skin um, in different areas of the skin. So the upper back, neck, elbow, and your results, significant reduction in water loss for all body parts in the ceramide group compared to placebo. Now we often try to lock in uh, moisture and seal in water within the skin with, um, with different types of oils that we sometimes use topically, but ceramides can also help to lock in that moisture from the inside out. And other nutrients to support the skin health, vitamin C. Uh, I can remember years ago doing a, a lecture on skin health from the inside out. And, um, and I often showed a vitamin C serum study. This was a topical vitamin C um, preparation that really improved dark spots in the study participants. But vitamin C is obviously beneficial working on the inside. It's needed for collagen production. It helps to stabilize the collagen molecule. Um, it reduces oxidative stress damage to your DNA. It helps to scavenge free radicals in the skin. So vitamin C is another uh, nutrient to protect the skin. And just as a summary, you know, we kind of went over uh, the assaults to the skin, keeping in mind the pollution, the sun, managing the sun damage, but inside out protection uh, with clinical data through an herbal preparation, uh, vitamin C, as well as ceramides. And let's move on to our last topic, which is our, our focus on a new strain of probiotic. Uh, that specifically targets occasional constipation. And to open up this topic, I wanted to just kind of go into what's normal? That's always the question that I get as a nutritionist. How often should I go? Um, and it can vary. Three times per day, if you're really regular, uh, up to three times per week. So many people think you have to go every day in order to be you know, considered normal, not the case. 
Um, so as a broad rule, um, you know, you can go from three or have from three to 21 bowel movements per week and still be considered normal. So what that means is constipation basically is going less than three times per week. Why is the second question. How often, and then if I'm not going, why not? Start with fluids, plenty of water. Um, it could be a medication that you're taking, um, some antidepressants, some blood pressure medications, um, especially those diuretics um, can lead to constipation. Maybe it's just your diet. Maybe you are not eating enough fiber. Maybe you're having too much fiber without enough water. Uh, that could be it. You know, some foods that you may want to consider adding into your diet. Um, kiwi is really great. Prunes. Yep. The old tried and true prunes, they are good. And it's not the fiber, it's actually the, some of the sugar um, alcohols found inside of prunes. Um, high fiber fruit like an apple or like apples or pears. Um, hormones, sluggish thyroid may, uh, may be a cause of your constipation. You know, those are other things you may want to investigate. Insufficient digestion. Always good to think about just the digestive enzyme. What's going to help you to break down that food more properly, help to get that food through the digestive tract. Um, and, and typically what's happening when you think about constipation, it's really you're having a slow transit time. And that's where, uh, where this probiotic comes in. But first let's talk about common solutions, laxatives, right? There are many types of laxatives, bulk laxatives. That could be almost like your, um, your soluble fibers that just help to bulk the stool to help that out. Osmotic laxative, those help to draw water into the, the colon. Uh, you have stool softeners. They actually help to just soften the stool. Sometimes you, uh, and, and then you also have the, the stimulant laxatives, which are particularly problematic, especially with long-term use. Yes, they work, but they're working with the, the nervous system to kind of stimulate um, contractions that will help you to go, but just be very, very careful with the laxatives that you choose. Um, many of uh, your laxatives are not meant for long-term use. You are seeing laxative abuse. You shouldn't have to take a stimulant laxative um, to go to the bathroom every time you need to go. That means that something else is going on. And many people just aren't satisfied with these options. Um, and so you do have a uh, lacking, uh, there, there are less options of things that you can use or take um, that are non-laxatives. Of course, you have the supplements. Magnesium's great. You can take as much up to bowel tolerance. Uh, vitamin C as well um, can help to draw water into the colon to help you to go to the bathroom. You know, all of the, the magnesium, the vitamin C, you can kind of test out the dose that works for you. Sometimes taking them combined can be helpful as well. Um, fiber. We just don't get enough fiber. Uh, those of you who, who follow me and some of my talks, you know that I'm a big proponent of fiber, upwards of 35, maybe even 40 grams per day. The key to fiber is to work your way up. Don't start with that much and make sure you're drinking plenty of water and try to get the fiber from your foods. Fiber supplements are great. Um, I, in, in my years, I have used the, the fiber uh, powders like the psyllium, husk, um, and, and those can be helpful. The, the glucomannan um, can also be beneficial as a supplement, um, but you want to make sure you go start low and go slow and drink plenty of water. Uh, but look at the foods that you're eating um, and, and kind of identify if you're eating anything, any type of grain, let's say this. So if it's 
rice, if you are buying cereal, if you are buying pasta, the whole purpose, the benefits of those grains is, is to give you fiber. So look at your labels, compare you know, the different brands that you buy and find ones that's, that gives you a good serving of fiber. One pasta, whole grain pasta that I buy in the store, one serving gives me about six grams of fiber. If you're not getting that from your pasta, you're buying the wrong pasta in the store. Um, and then of course you have probiotics that can help to support um, a healthy valve movement. And so one in particular um, is Bifidobacterium lactis HN019. And Pro, the world of probiotics is really advancing. We now understand that there are strain specific uh, probiotics that can help different body systems. And what stood out to me as I started exploring Bifidobacterium lactis HN019, and I have to call that out because you can have Bifidobacterium lactis without the HN019, and you cannot expect to receive the same health benefits from that Bifidobacterium lactis. So it is very specific what I'm talking about and what I'll review in the research to this strain. Um, this is a strain that um, is clinically studied to move the stool through the uh, digestive tract more rapidly. And this was selected from over 2,000 other strains. And I think that's important. And that kind of speaks to the point that, you know, taking a probiotic is great. Taking a, a, a probiotic formula with many different species and strains of uh, bacteria is fantastic. But you know, if you're dealing with a specific uh, health goal, or if you have a specific health goal, you do want to look at um, the strain-specific uh, forms of the probiotics for your health needs. And they can span many health needs now, from oral health to immune health to heart health. Uh, we can, I can go on and on and on. Uh, but in particular right now, we are talking about digestive health, more specifically helping you to go to the bathroom and move that stool through the body faster. So how is this working? Well, we do know that the, the Bifidobacterium lactis is releasing short chain fatty acids. Those are types of fats. And they are stimulating, and that's gonna get my pointer here so that you can see, they're stimulating a specific type of cell. And so what we're looking at here, these are intestinal cells. And this is the Bifidobacterium lactis HN019, and these are the short chain fatty acids that are released. And so what we see here, is it's stimulating a particular type of intestinal cell oops, to release neurotransmitters. Those neurotransmitters, in particular, serotonin is one um, that you know most of your serotonin in your gut is actually um, released from this particular type of cell. And what this does, it helps the to 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 get that intestine, the, the, that colon, to contract, which is going to help to push and move the food through the colon faster. So this all translates to a faster transit time. And again, transit time, very self-explanatory. That's the time measures uh, the time it takes for the stool to move through the digestive tract. So when evaluating constipation, doctors look at uh, colonic transit time, which on average is about 30 to 40 hours. Although we do know some healthy people have a transit time closer to about 24 hours. 
But when the transit time is longer, it means that food is taking a long time to pass through. Um, and then regular bowel movements do not occur. So when we look at some of the research with this strain, here's a study um, evaluating uh, the bifidobacterium lactis on transit time and GI symptoms. And this is in the Scandinavian Journal of Gastroenterology, where it was published, 88 men and women with moderate constipation. And, and so this particular strain was added to yogurt, taken once daily for two weeks, just two weeks. And so they, the researchers tested out a, a low dose, a high dose, and again, and of course there was the placebo group as the control group. And what we see here in these results, they are measuring transit time. How quickly or how slowly is the stool traveling through the colon? And so we see the placebo group. This is the group that received, did not receive the probiotic. There is no change in transit time. And this is, they measured it at day 14, at baseline, day one and day 14. And we see the low dose group, there was an improvement in transit time, 31% faster transit time. It's like, yes, we're getting there. And in the high dose group, a 57% faster transit time with this particular uh, strain of bacteria. But not only that, what's really nice about this study is they also gave the participants a digestive comfort questionnaire. And they found, which you don't see these type of results with, let's say, fiber. Fiber may you know, improve transit time, may not improve symptoms. And so we see the high dose group also saw a decrease in constipation frequency, a 52% decrease, a 52 decrease in abdominal pain frequency, as well as a 48% decrease in nausea frequency. So what that means is these people felt better. You know, they were there, they had a faster transit time. Their transit time actually translated into the normal group. Initially, they were considered uh, being constipated based on that transit time. And by the end of those two weeks, they were uh, in a normal range for transit time, normal healthy range for transit time, but they also had more digestive comfort with this particular strain of bacteria. And there you have it. Those are our nutrients, immune support, something new to think about, beta-glucans, skin protection with through an herbal blend, rice ceramides, and also consider vitamin C, as well as occasional constipation relief with bifidobacterium lactis, HN019. Now, you can view this, uh, this webinar in the future at lifeextension.com slash webinar. And I thank you so much for your attention and your participation. Um, when you, we do have references for the beta-glucan, the skin protection, as well as the occasional constipation. So that will also be available um, at lifeextension.com slash webinar. And again, I am Dr. Crystal Gossert, Doctor of Clinical Nutrition, and you can find me as well as Dr. Mike. Some of you may be familiar with Dr. Mike. We host a, a weekly podcast, Live Forever-ish. So I just wanted to kind of put, um, put that plug out there. If you go to liveforeverish.com, that's liveforeverish.com, you can check out our podcast. Every, every Monday, we, uh, we launch a new podcast. And then we are also live on Life Extension's Facebook and our YouTube page every Wednesday 
at three o'clock. So you can uh, also make sure you subscribe and, and you'll always be in the know for the latest and greatest health information. For Life Extension, thank you so much for your participation and I hope you all have a great afternoon.